What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finished Coding. This is part one of the Dodgeball series on Scratch 3, so let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now before we actually move on, it is pretty important to define what exactly we're trying to accomplish with first of all the game and then what we're going to do in this video. So our overall idea for the game is we're going to have a cat sprite which is the player and the player is going to be able to move around the bottom of the screen using the left and right arrow keys and then when he presses the up arrow key, he is going to be able to jump and we're going to have an additional double jump player so that the player can actually jump on top of a jump but no more. So another thing um, that we're going to add for the game since it's obviously dodgeball are balls and what they're going to do is they're going to randomly start appearing um, from this right hand corner of the screen and they're going to start shooting either towards the cat or away from the cat basically in a random direction and then the cat okay or the player is going to be uh, given uh, is going to basically have to avoid them and um, he can do that by uh, using like i said the movements which are done using the arrow keys and if he evades them for a specific time frame which is the duration of the game he's going to win and in case a ball hits him before that he's going to lose so that's the overall idea about the game now uh, specifically in this video we're going to be doing the motion of the um, player and we're not going to incorporate double jumps for now we're just going to be doing basic jumps okay with that said let's actually get into it the first thing i want to do is to rename my sprite player because i think it's a little more formal to go with uh, just like that so now as a uh, now let's actually get into the um, initialization so head over to events grab or when the green flag is clicked and before you move on, I want you to set a variable called a um, bottom position or just bottom pause for short. And um, this is actually an important variable to set up because we can use a hard coded value, but in case we want to change it and tweak it a little bit, um, we can just change it here at one place so that it would work throughout the entire program than not setting the variable in the first place and then going to every single place and changing it. So this is pretty important. So now we're going to set bottom position right now to be, uh, I'll go with negative 120, okay? But we might change it later on. So the next thing we want to do is to um, move the cat to X0 and Y um, bottom position. And you can get that from the variables tab. Okay, now we also want to set a few things and we want to switch the costume to costume 1, which is this costume. And we want this to be the way the cat looks when the player enters the game. And we're also, be going, to, uh, we're also going to be setting the rotation style to be just left to right, so that we don't have the cat uh, rotating all around the screen in a really, really awkward manner. Okay, so that's with our basic initializations. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit so that you guys can see the code um, better. So I hope this looks clear. Okay, here we are. Now the main uh, loop is going to be a forever loop and you can find that in the control section and grab one if for now. Now what we want to say inside the if is head over to sensing and say if key right arrow is pressed what we want to do is first of all point in the right direction which is uh, 90 and uh, then we want to change x by um, it says 10 i'm going to say 8 it's a little uh, slower but i think the player would have a little more control if we go with that now next thing i'm going to uh, do is actually check if the y position is equals to the bottom position and only then change to the next costume because or changing to the next costume when the player is jumping is going to look really, really weird. So uh, head over to control, um, grab an if, and uh, uh, head over to operators and grab a simple equals to. And uh, in motion, you can find the y position of the player and you just have to check if it is equal to the bottom position. 
Now, it, if it is, it means the player has not jumped yet. And uh, then that's basically a simple way to just set the Y position. So I'm going to just say uh, uh, next costume inside that. So here we are. So next you want to duplicate this and put that right below the if. And I'm now going to say if key left arrow is pressed, I'm going to change the direction to negative 90. And I am going to change X by negative 8. So that's for the left and right arrow keys and I think they're working pretty well for now. Cool. Let's now move on to a basic jump. So we don't want to actually deal with the jump within this uh, main block of code itself. Instead, what we're going to be doing is to be creating another block, okay, uh, which is going to hold some of um, code in it. And we can do that by heading to the events category and saying when key space is pressed and change the space to up arrow key, okay. Now, um, when the key up arrow is pressed, here's what we need to check. First of all, we want to check if the Y position is the low, um, is the bottom position, okay? So we can do that. And um, it's important right here, you don't use an if, but instead use an if else. And this will actually come in handy when we're doing our double jumps, okay? So make sure you use an if else and not an if. So if, else and inside the if the condition we're going to put is again a simple operator and uh, grab an equals to from operators and then uh, head over to variables bottom position and from motion we're going to grab the y position variable and uh, now if the y position is equals to the bottom position then we're basically going to jump and here's what you do for that code first you initialize a variable called speed and uh, here we are going to be seeing if speed is, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to change by speed, okay? We're going to change the, oops, not bottom position. We're going to change the Y position by speed, okay? Change Y by speed. And before that, we are actually going to set speed to be 25, okay? And you can view this kind of as our takeoff speed, if you wish. So change Y by speed. And that's it we're actually going to be having right here. Now inside our forever loop, okay, I want you to add another if else, okay. So head over to control and grab an if else. Now inside this if, what we're going to be having is um, if, oops, so head over to operators and if y position okay is less than we want to duplicate that so if y position is less than and uh, what we need is a uh, bottom position okay but um, not just the bottom position but it's going to be the bottom position minus one you'll actually understand why we did this later on okay but i'll uh, just make sure you have this right here for now so in this case, what we're going to do is to set Y to be the um, bottom position. And um, we are also going to be setting the speed to be equals to zero. So, oops, why am I creating a new variable? So we just need to set the speed to be equals to zero. You can do them in any order if you want. Okay, so this is the important part right here. So you can leave this else uh, vacant right as of now. So Scratch won't run into any bugs because of that, uh, at least not my knowledge. So let's keep that as for now. So here we are. And uh, what we uh, want to actually do is to constantly change the speed by negative 2.5, okay? And you can do that by, I actually was talking about this else. I know, I, I think I got a bit confused with this else. So inside this um, else, we basically want to have a change speed by negative uh, 2.5, okay? That is going to suit it right there. So now uh, hit the green flag and try and test your um, uh, motion. So this kind of gets us into this wacky bug where the speed just seems to be changing endlessly. And uh, I suppose one of the reasons is that we've not set the speed to be equals to anything. Okay, so initially I'm gonna set speed to be equals to zero. Okay, so this should, 
kind of sort out a few bugs, but you can still see the speed constantly keeps going, um, going uh, down and down. And that's because it's constantly using um, this block code right here, which is kind of perplexing because the Y position is, oh wait, yeah, here's our buffer. Okay, so we basically messed up with the operators and yeah, you just want to interchange them. So you can see it's still kind of pretty weird and wacky. I mean, it's hard to understand why the um, position does not, I mean, it's just, it is jumping, but it comes down instantaneously. And now that's because the speed changes really, really fast. And all we'd have to do is to add a small time lag for uh, the speed change. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for 0.2 seconds. Okay, let's see if that's an adequate time lag. Now again, it's kind of a wacky motion. Uh, you just have to increase the time lag a bit in order to solve that. Okay, but I'm not gonna do it in this video right now. So as of this video, you should have a really wacky uh, jump motion. But um, uh, stay with that. In the next video, we're actually going to be solving this uh, bug and making it a proper jump along with a proper double jump as well. Okay. So that's it for this tutorial, guys. Uh, the next tutorial will release within a few days. Um, now, we have a daily upload in our channel. So we have a new video coming out every single day. So uh, do not miss out for the uploads. I highly recommend you to um, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you're notified about um, further releases also if you watch this far please help me out by just liking the video it takes a fraction of time and it really boosts my rating on YouTube algorithm so thanks for watching everyone I'll see you in a few days bye bye